guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on another March episode. This is uh, for March 2018, and we have been working with the color green. So last time we dyed up some greens, and today we're going to do some carding. But before we get started, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping right quick. So I will let you guys just look at this beautiful fiber while I talk. How's that? And I'm going to sit here and pick it. Um, so you guys... You know, picking is an important part of carding because um, the fibers need to be airy and loose in order for the carder to uh, work easily with uh, without hurting your hands and your arms. So, all right, while I'm doing this, and I'm just pulling the fibers apart, that's all I'm doing here, um, fluffing it out, removing any big pieces of trash. This is a messy job, so... Um, if you don't want to get it all over your clothes, put a sheet or something over your lap. Um, I'm not worried about it. I'll wipe my clothes off, brush my clothes off, and um, sweep the floor later. This is one of those instances where it's okay to throw it on the floor because the floor can be swept. Alright, so housekeeping. Um, if you're new to the show, welcome. I appreciate you joining in. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for continuing to watch my shows. Um, if you have not subscribed to my shows, please do so. Hit the subscribe button so you can see lots of awesomeness. We'll be doing more and more tutorials and things like that in the near future. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to comment in the comment sections below. Let me know what which of these greens is your absolute favorite. Right now I'm working with the Kelly Green. Um, and this is turquoise and sun yellow that gets the beautiful Kelly green from Jacquard acid dyes. Also tell me what you would like to do with this. Um, if you had all of these different greens or this one in particular, uh, what you would do with it. So yes, please comment in the comment section below. Um, head on over to the Ravelry group. It's a uh, fairly fiber fun on Ravelry linked in the show notes below. And join in the group, post pictures, share your progress, crafts that you're working on, gardening, things like that. We want to see what you're working on. Also, um, if you'd be interesting, interested in joining in some giveaways and other fun activities that are coming up, please head over to the Patreon page and see what that's all about. You'll have an opportunity to sponsor the show or um, participate in giveaways behind the scenes content, extra stuff, um, early release on some videos. So yeah, there's lots of cool things going on over there, so check it out. Again, it's linked in the show notes below. Well, I think that's about all, so why don't we get started with the carding? Okay, so um, these are hand cards and they are I think 72 tips per inch which I find is really really easy to use. I do have cotton hand cards right here and these are 180 tips per inch and they are the teeth are much closer together much more dense and it takes a little more effort to card wool. Now what I'm working with is 100% targi Whoops. and it's a very fine wool and it should work in the 180 tips per inch hand cards, but it takes quite a bit of effort and I just enjoy the less dense hand cards. So with that in mind, let's get started. So I have a, a handful of fluff and I'm just going to start putting it on bottom up. And I know you're not supposed to fill up your carter all the way across, but I usually do. just because. Um, and that's all I'm going to put on for this method. So that's a pretty pretty nice little layer there. And I learned this method from a video called Card Like a Ghost. I will link to that in the show notes. So um, it's regular carding. You start at the bottom and you brush the hair. You take in little nibbles. You don't, don't let the teeth really move against each other. Okay. 
you're just picking up the fiber and gently pulling it so that it's transferring and being brushed at the same time. And I'm starting near the bottom and I'm just brushing it like you would brush hair. And you want to flip that end right there out of the way because if that folds over it's, it's not going to create a very nicely spinnable fiber or prep. So. You want to grab bigger nibbles every time. And I'm just using a little bit of the teeth, push them together, lift and pull. And that transfers the fiber and it also um, cards it, which is smoothing it out and making all the fibers kind of go the same direction. There are other ways to do this and you can transfer the fiber and card. If you're one-handed you just keep doing that it'll work great. To transfer you hold your hand cards handles up, drop the empty one and kind of lay it down Put the full one on top so that the tip is near the handle and you just kind of scrape them against each other. Now I'm going to card it a little bit more and I've got a few little nips so you feel free to remove those nips as you go. And you can, you can lay your carder down like this and just kind of brush gently without the teeth touching. That works but I, I kind of like the other way. This way works best the rocking motion if you have kind of rounded hand cards so that it's more rounded here. But mine are fairly flat, which is fine. Only a little bit rounded. Okay. So now, now you've carded your fiber and you can do multiple things with it. So we're going to start with my favorite. I'm going to transfer it over and then I'm right-handed so this is my right hand here and I'm just gonna put the right hand card teeth down underneath the fiber where it's coming off the first hand card and I'm just gonna fold the tip of the fiber over my hand and kinda hold it down and then I'm gonna lift with the hand card the back of the hand card I'm just gonna scoop that up and fold it over again. I'm going to keep doing this until I get it all the way rolled up. And then I'm going to move it back to the front of the hand card or the tip and just roll it against the teeth. And do that, you know, where it's not rolled all that well. And there you have a beautiful roll log that is incredibly light and airy and easy to spin. And it's my, my favorite way to spin hand carded wool. Okay, So let's go through the carding process again. First we're going to load our brush, hand card, excuse me. And this time I'm not going to load it all the way up. I'm going to leave a little bit of space all the way around, which is what you're supposed to do. I've discovered that hand carding is similar to spinning. Whatever works for you is the way to do it. So if it doesn't work for you, then you might want to try a slightly different method and see if it works. So now I've got my wool loaded on the hand cards. I'm just going to start carding away a little bit at a time. Get it all transferred off of the left hand card and it's all on the right and now I'm going to do it again. A little bit at a time. Switch the cards so one's facing one way and the other's facing the other if you do it two-handed. You're predominantly right-handed. Transfer the fiber to the left carder. 
and card again. Yep, there's some that I don't really want. Really, really short fibers there. They'll make a bump in your yarn, so your yarn won't be smooth. And when you're satisfied with the carding, transfer it to your non-dominant hand card. Card are underneath the fibers, teeth facing away. Scoop them up and over your hand so that they're folded. Hold that fold down, pick it up, pick the folded edge up, roll it over, hold it down, pick the folded edge up, roll it over, fold it down, until you have it all the way off the card, laid right at the beginning of the teeth so that the top edge of your hand card and the top edge of your hand cards are together and just roll your teeth across with the top card. And then you can do that as many times as you need to to get a nicely formed roll log. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pick some more wool and card up in the next batch and then I'll be back to show you how to another way to remove it from the hand cards. Alright guys, uh, now we're using some of the green, um, beautiful winter green that was made using turquoise and bright yellow. I've already picked some and it's sitting right here. And I have a carter full. Now, for puny style roll logs, I think it's easiest to leave your fiber in the hand cart. It's in the teeth, I have not loosened it up at all. And you can do this. Uh, with the fiber, the tip of the fiber facing away from you, or you can do this with it facing you. And I find this a little bit easier because I can control it with my thumbs. And this is very similar to using a blending board. So if you've ever used a blending board, you know how to do this. Um, so I have wooden knitting needles here that are, I think, US 10, um, six millimeter needles. And what you want to do is put one underneath the fiber and one on top and start rolling until you've got a good grip with the needles. And you're gonna lift just a little bit and pull so you're drafting out that fiber. And then roll, draft, roll, and then keep rolling with a slight amount of pull. Gently roll it in your hand. I discovered if you don't do it gently, it's very difficult to draft. You can uh, roll this too tight and that's not very pleasant. So here's a nicely formed roll log off of one hand card. It's very easy to roll into a little snail. So there you can see that one. And I'm just going to go grab the other ones right quick. I'll show you the difference here. Of course the color difference, but here's the lighter, looser roll log that we rolled with our hand and the hand cards and the more tightly rolled puny style roll log. So they are a bit different. Um, I find this to be easier to spin long draw just because it's more loosely um, wrapped up. but. Both of them work fairly well. It just depends on your preference. So I'm going to card up another batch really, really quick at my usual carding speed. And I'm not speeding this up. You guys can watch it. Real life speed. I did a really good job um, scouring this fleece and there's no lanolin in it and it's so silky and soft and amazing. Okay, so I think that's enough and this time I'll do it facing away from me. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm, just, I'm kind of sticking the handle between my legs here to kind of pinch it down a little bit. Um, Sometimes I find that helps a lot. Sometimes I hold it between my knees, but you guys can't see that. 
So, you know, it's whatever works. Put one needle underneath the fiber that's coming off, put one on top. Now pinch the fiber between them and then start rolling. And this is why it's awkward because I have to push with my fingers or grab it between my legs and just kind of pull up. Okay, but it's the same principle and you just roll until there's none left on the hand card. And then you wrap, roll it between your, roll it gently in your hand. And I'm just, I'm kind of cupping my hand loosely around it and just relaxing my hand and moving the needles in the same direction that they were already rolling. And then remove one needle at a time and there's your roll off. Now I'll show you why I don't, um, why I draft when I do this. I'll show you what it looks like when you don't draft. So I'll do one more. And I'm just messily put that on there. So, bear with me while I card up another batch right quick. doing okay so if you don't want to draft the fiber you just want to roll it up you just lift it as you roll and it works it's a little bit quicker a little bit messier a little bit looser so you get a slightly looser prep that way but it's a very organized little roll lock. I know I kind of flew through that, so uh, if you if you want a more detailed, close up, slower version of any of these techniques, just let me know in the comment section below. Now I do have um, another method to show you, so I'm going to um, go pick the fiber and card up a batch, and then I'll be back. Alright guys, so now I want to show you how I like to diz off the hand cards and I've got a diz that I made out of polymer clay. It's got a few different size holes and uh, for today I think I'm going to use the medium size. I've just got a little crochet hook here to grab the fiber and pull it through. So I'm going to start at the corner and I like to do this with the hand cards facing me. Now I did move the camera down a little bit so you could see this better. I hope it helps. So I'm going to grab a little bit and twist put my hook through the hole that I want to use. Grab that fiber and pull it through. And then I don't need the hook again. So here we have fiber coming out of the hole. And I'm just going to start pushing the diz down and then pull the fiber, push the diz down, pull the fiber, and gradually moving over like any other form of dizzing, very easy to do. If you heard that, I apologize, my stomach just rumbled. So do a little lift and pull, lift and pull, really slow and easy. until I've got it all the way off. And this is some really beautiful roving. It's not 100% even, but it is absolutely lovely to spin. And uh, make a little nest. There you have it. Now this is the um, brilliant blue and bright yellow, which I put too much blue in it. But it turns out to be this gorgeous color see that it's beautiful all right so let's try that again load up my cards I'm just gonna um, blast through this right quick and I think this time I will make it um, continuous so 
Um, you can do individual nests or you can make it continuous. I kind of like the individual nests because I need to move my hook regularly and I need to stop periodically in my spinning. And um, I just think that helps quite a bit. Now, any of these methods of prepping your carded, your hand carded wool can be used uh, with dog brushes. So I will demonstrate um, one time at the end of this video how to use dog brushes instead of hand cards. So, if you want to see that, stay tuned. I used hand um, dog brushes for a whole year before I got my hand cards, so it works fairly well. Now what do I do with my diz? Here it is. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to move the camera down here, um, and then you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing, so hold tight. Okay, so now you guys are getting a really good close-up. And you can probably hear my stomach grumbling because it is very loud and obnoxious. I just pushed the disc down and that's going to make it pick up a little bit more fiber so if you don't want as much you don't want to push it down as far and a light lift and pull you do want the the teeth to be holding the fiber and that's not the camera shaking that is my legs Okay, now, so we only have a little bit left to do, so we're just going to pull that off the carter, but we're going to leave the diz on there, and then we're going to cart up another section, and then I'll be back to show you um, how you attach this to the next carter full. Okay, this angle might be a little bit better. Um, so I've loaded this card a little bit fuller than I did the last one, so um, it's going to have a little bit more to come off. Alright, so our last little bit, I'm going to back the diz up a little, and I'm just going to lay the fiber on the hand card and kind of pat it in a little bit. And then I'm picking up what I just carded and I'm going to hold it in place and push the diz down over that and catch some of that new fiber. So now already you can see that it's pulling off the, the teeth of the carter. And so it's, uh, sometimes you have to hold the fiber down to get it to draft a little bit better so it's not big and clumpy. And it really works quite well to do this. The thicker your fiber is on the hand card, the thicker it's going to want to come through the diz. And you know, if I wanted to do another card or fly, I would just leave it here like this and just reattach it to the hand cards um, when I'm ready to diz again. But for this time, I'm done. So that is how you diz off hand cards. All right. So now I want to show you. Um off of dog brushes and I'm going to show you one more way to take 
your fiber off and I'll just demonstrate on these little dog brushes. So I probably overloaded that, but I just load it up like you normally would or any kind of carter. And now the surface of these brushes is curved, so the rocking motion works really, really well. And um, if you have hand cards and you, you find that your wrists are hurting or your shoulder is hurting, you might want to try dog brushes because they're not heavy. And they don't really hurt that much to use. They're not difficult to use at all. They're very easy to use. Um, you just have to be a little bit more careful about not tangling up the fiber. So, the other way to pull it off is just to literally lift it off the carter. And then you can hand roll it any way you want to. Now, I have the fibers going this way. So, to keep them lined up, you can simply roll with all the fibers going the same direction. So I just rolled across the surface of the hand cards like that. And then you can spin like this or you can draft it. I find pre-drafting this uh, particular prep helps quite a lot is very similar to the roving because all the fibers are going pretty much the same direction. Okay guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this um, carding demonstration tutorial lesson of carding up fibers and taking them off the hand carder different ways for different styles of spinning. Uh, to recap, we have my absolute favorite, which is the first one we did at the beginning of our video. Um, where we use the hand carts to roll the roll off, just like the lady did in um, Card Like a Ghost. That's where I learned this method from. And we have the Puni style roll off. I've already drafted it a little bit. Um, it's very dense. This one was drafted as it was being um, rolled up, and the more you pull it, the tighter the center becomes. And then we have the non drafted Puni style roll log. And it's much looser in the center, like it's not as dense. And so this will draft a little bit easier and be more fun to spin. And then we have our dizzed bumps. So we have our individual bump, which I think is just better, in my opinion. More evenly dizzed. This one doesn't have any real weak spots or thin spots. Um, and this is official roving. It is carded and then dizzed off the hand card, so it is not top, it is roving. And then we have the continuous roving, which has a weak spot where I joined. So I was going to split that. And that's one of the reasons I don't like to do continuous roving. If you play around with it a bit, you'll eventually get better and have less of those weak spots. But it's been a while since I did this. And all of these methods can be used on either hand cards or dog brushes. This is a bit that I rolled up and then drafted. So this is very similar to the roving and this came off the dog brushes. So recap on that. We carded like normal and then we rolled the fiber this way after taking it off the hand card. So all the fibers were going sideways and we just rolled it up like a little burrito and then um, drafted it out to make it easier to spin. And it looks almost exactly the same as the disc roving. So it's up to you how you want to spin this. You can also um, spin straight off the hand cards or the dog brushes and that works just as well. Spinning off the, the carters uh, makes a very worsted yarn while spinning roving or roll logs can make more of a worsted yarn, but it all depends on how you draft and how much twist, whether or not you allow twist into the draft zone and all that. So we will talk about that in another video. And of course, another carding option is to use a drum carder, and I just got one, so we will be exploring that a little bit more in a little bit more detail later on down the road. And also, you can always spin straight from the cloud, 
So you can take your wool, pick it, remove the little bits and pieces that aren't going to make good yarn, little nips and things, and spin directly from the cloud. I've heard this works a whole lot better if all of your fiber is the same length. Um, so you need to have a really even fleece to spin from the cloud successfully, or without frustration rather. Um, I don't care for, for that because it's, I'm lazy when I'm spinning. I just want to spin and not think about it. So um, I don't usually spin from the cloud, but you can. You can even kind of make weird looking roving and then spin it. I mean, tools are not 100% necessary when you're working with fleece. So if you're on a really tight budget and you're already a spinner and you just want to spin fleece, but you've never given it a try because top comes already prepped, um, I would recommend go ahead and try the fleece. Scour it really good with Power Scour and um, fluff it out really, really well and then spin it and see what happens. Um, it might make a gorgeous art yarn, all slubby and wonderful, so you never know. Give it a try. If you want to start with dog brushes, that's how I started and I carded for a whole year and I made an entire sweater from a fleece that I processed myself with nothing more than my two hands and dog brushes and a spinning wheel. So there's lots and lots of options. Some are uh, more efficient than others time-wise and some are more efficient than others budget-wise. So it's all up to you and your personal style of spinning and fiber prep. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment in the comment sections below. Please tell me a what, which of these greens you really, really like, and uh, B, what your favorite prep that I just showed you is. So please let me know which one of these methods you like best, and I will see you again soon. Bye, guys!